I'm really uh, looking forward to starting this painting series class. The first class we're going to do is looking at the difference of warm and cool colors and how you can use that to improve your paintings. Um, obviously the color wheel is broken into warm colors which are the yellows, orange, and reds and then the cool colors which are green, blue, and purple. Um, you can just think that like the warmth is the sun and and blue is cold and sky and all these cool green grasses. Um, and generally what how you use this is you can use the the what we know about warm colors um, coming forward in a painting and cool colors receding in a painting to create the depth to what you're painting, whether that's a still life um, or not. Where the confusion kind of comes in, in in thinking about warm and cool colors is that um, every color has a warm and a cool version. So there isn't just all cool blues. There's a there's a warm and a cool version of blue, and a warm and a cool version of yellow, and a warm and a cool version of red. And this how you choose the warm versus the cool red, yellow, or blue to mix your colors will determine what kind of quality of final mixed um, hybrid color you're going to get. So if you're wanting to mix a purple, since purple is cool, you want to mix it with a cool red um, because you'll get a more vibrant purple. If you mixed it with a warmer red, that's more of a, of a complementary color and it will muddy it. We'll talk about this more in class, but it's worth noting that within all of these primary colors, there are really are differences in levels of warmth, and that's how we'll determine how we'll mix. Um, so how do you use this knowledge to make a better painting um, now that we know about warmth and, and coolness? Let's, let's look at this um, example. If you look at the red, it's very obviously coming towards you. Um, it's more vibrant. It's, it's actually seeming to move away from the black versus the blue seems to be kind of nestling into the black around it and pushing backward. So if we know that, if we know when we want to paint a structure or a form, say we want to, you know, this is what's going to happen. Look at how forward this, um, the warm colors are. Or in this painting, look at the plum on the right. It recedes into the background. It's darker and the apple next to it comes forward, it's lighter. So this is how you get to play with space when you're doing a still life. Um, even Mona Lisa's face, the, 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 the flesh tones are a, a warmer color than the background, so her face is forward, it gives a painting depth. Um, same with this Matisse one. Let's look at the skin on her. She wants the one cheek to be moving forward, that's a warmer color, it comes forward. The other cheek is a cooler color, it goes backward. In a very blatant form, you know, you have these reds that are popping out of the blue and green behind it, making these Matisse figures kind of seem to float on the page. Um, and this is a really interesting one to look at because there's, there's, it's almost flattened and made this abstract because the blue and the red are kind of playing with space. Um, the parts that should be going forward are receding and vice versa. And this one is great because look at how in your face those orange warm fish are and the cool greens are receding. So it gives a lot of depth. And again, um, look at the green background is receding. It's cool. It's receding. And then the warm red is in the red of her face is and coming forward. Um, Warhol does this a lot in his screen prints. If you look at like how these choices he makes is is creating this crazy sense of what plane of her of Marilyn Monroe's face is coming forward. In some of them, the hair is receding, and some of the background is playing with the space in the front. Um, so there's really so many great examples of using this. This is um, Andre Duran. He made a crazy wild kind of sensation because there's no sense of what's going on here because he's playing so much with the receding and emerging colors in the kind of weird way that it's really um, playing with the composition. So what we're kind of going to do is merge what we're working on warm and cool colors with a still life that has some symbolism. Um, but there's a long history of still lives having symbolism. This is called a memento mori, which actually translates from Latin into remember that you have to die. Um, it symbolizes the fleeting nature of life, the skull and everything. Um, also, another type is vanitas, like you see bubbles here and a light going out. These are things that are fleeting. But there's also very traditional, um, you know, still lives of fruit um, and, you know, dinner table stuff. But often what's happening when you see a still life is you're seeing these objects and things that are important to people. Um, and for example, in this Stuart Davis portrait, in these Stuart Davis um, still lifes, you know, they capture like the life in the city that's important to him and the food he likes, and the music he likes, 
Um, we see the same in the Roy Lichtenstein portraits. We see his paint supplies, um, you know, life by the ocean, whatever, and, and also just traditional fruit um, kind of things. Uh, Audrey Flack was a huge feminist um, uh, painter in her still lives to pick like all sorts of tropes about women and men. Um, Fernando Botero, just I should include these because these colors are amazing. When we're thinking of uh, cool and light, this might be something to think about. And also, still lives let you be really stylized and really have fun. This is Aubrey Leventhal. She's a Philly painter. But again, you could be painterly with these. These are much more painterly still lives and kind of vague and mystical. Um, versus Jonas Wood, who does these very, you know, incorporates his interests and his life in there, and he puts them on milk crates. Um, Paul Boner is just also like, this is another way to, like, when we're talking about the still life we're going to do, you can map it out any way you want. You can have it clustered in the center. You have it sitting on chairs or milk crates. Um, uh, Mary Faden did remarkable things with t the colors and textiles, and I know I show her a lot. I, I do. Um, and food. Um, and yeah, and then Nicholas Vasilev is just does these colors. I've showed this because it's also kind of painterly. Um, and then Ilya Mashkov is a Russian painter, just again to look at the warm and cools in the still lifes. Um, so we're going to be making still lifes, but we are going to be making them out of the objects of people, somebody that you love, a friend, a parent, a sibling a niece, a nephew, a child, um, think of the things they love, the foods they love. Um, this is one I'm wor I worked on for my father. His most prized possession is his guitar. Um, he carries those little index cards everywhere he goes and writes little notes on them. He loves Listerine. He only wears cowboy boots, even to my sister's wedding with his tux. Um, so just this, this is what we're going to be doing. So I want you to, your homework is to gather objects, images of objects, even on your phone is fine. Um, that when we put them together in a warm and cool still life, at the end, we will have a portrait of someone that you love based on just the objects that they love, the foods that they love, the drinks that they love, the objects they love. Okay, thanks. Bye.